<clears throat> okay, let me show you what I'm trying to do here. I'm going over the whole model in any place I see a little seam line and most of them are uh, oh hairline you, you know you can see them but you got to use your spectacles here to see them but I'm going through in any place really I see a um, a little hairline seam line or you know I do have a gap here I'm trying to fill in about a oh less than a sixteenth of an inch, maybe a millimeter millimeter and a half and I'm trying to fill them in and basically what I'm doing instead of using this putty or anything like that where you gotta get in and sand I've seen a fellow on uh, YouTube use this um, I gotta turn the camera around so I can see again what I'm showing you and uh, using this uh, formula 560 canopy glue now, good thing about it, it is a glue, so it'll help it here. All right, so that's I got that. I got a little cup of water here. I got my uh, knife in case I have to get into some real <clears throat> fine detail to get out this glue. I got these uh, Q-tips, supply Q-tips, uh, a couple of toothpicks, and a rag. <clears throat> now. For you people over in England, that's a cotton bud and a cocktail stick. I believe that's what you call them. I'm, I'm trying to get hip on your language over there. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. Get my little pad of paper here. Lay that down. Now you don't want to put a lot of this on this paper because it dries pretty fast. Uh, I mean you got a couple minutes to work with it but if you put a lot on here by the time you come back in a, in a few minutes it's going to start drying up so I just put a little dab if you can see that got a little dab there set this over out of the way get my visor down now I pick up a toothpick and I'm looking for some seam lines I know I've seen one all right, right along here, right along this edge here, I can see a little hairline gap. So I'm going to take this uh, canopy glue and work it into that gap. Just kind of spread it along. And I'll do a, I'll do a small area here so you can see what I'm doing. okay let me see if that shows up I don't know if it's showing up or not where's it at right there okay now before this sets up what I've been doing is uh, is that showing up I gotta switch between my visor and my glasses it's hell getting old okay we're in view I'm going to take my rag and dip it in this little cup of water kind of smoosh it out a little bit so I, d I don't really saturate this and just take and go over that line okay now let me go back to my visors okay and I filled that line in real good now the reason I got these Q-tips okay let me show you this one here now I've got this thing uh, here's it where's it at I went and bought this little syringe that's what I seen the other guy using I haven't got the hang of that yet um, you start pushing out on that syringe and all of a sudden boom man it comes out and you got a big glob there uh, but it has got a real fine point on it and it, it it does work pretty good if you can get the hang of it I just haven't got the hang of it yet alright here's another spot over here where this one strut comes down 
Now I'm going to get this in here. I'm going to show you why I got these Q-tips. This is a mess now. You're thinking, oh man, I'm ruining my model. I'm getting glue all over it. But I've seen this fellow do this, and this works pretty good. I did this yesterday on a couple spots. And then once you primer it, I don't know if I'm in view there or not. I'm trying to watch what I'm doing, and I can't see the camera. But I'm getting this in that seam, kind of pushing it in there. This stuff has the consistency of, uh, it's a little bit thinner than white glue, Elmer's glue. A little bit thinner than that, but thicker than uh, this Tamiya stuff. So it, it has a bit of a consistency to it where it will get in that gap and hold there. Alright, now I'm going to take my uh, little Q-tip here. I'm going to dip this Q-tip in the water. Okay, now it's saturated. I want to get some of that water off of it. So I'm just tapping it right there. Now, you just get in here and start cleaning. Start wiping away at it. Dip the Q-tip in to clean it off. Wipe it off. And come back. And what's nice about these little, hold on a second, I'll show you, is these little hard uh, Q-tips, they got a real nice little point on them, and they'll get down into the corners. I hope I'm in view. Okay, and I just keep wiping it, and dipping it, and wiping it until I get it all cleaned up to the point where all I'm left with is the glue that's in that seam I'll bring this up but I don't think you're gonna see it which one was I working on alright there it is all in there nasty looking I know you can't see that and there it is kind of cleaned up but uh, that's what I'm doing and I, I, like I said I've seen a guy do this another one having little tips and tricks things and uh, he basically uses it for his windows and that's what I'm going to do with it but I did see him also uh, go along his model like this and fill in any little tiny spots which is what I'm trying to do okay I'm gonna shut it down I think you've uh, had enough of this probably just let me get this little area cleaned up seeing if you saturate it with water and you come back in and try and get that water out of there or turn your q-tip around and use the dry end soak up that water Okay, I'm going to shut this down while I finish this up. Alright, we're back. Let me get you caught up to where I'm at. Uh, after doing this uh, formula stuff, I went out and put a coat of primer on it. And I, I, I didn't primer the whole thing, just around where I was using that stuff. And uh, I brought it in, had it sitting in here the other night, and... I noticed a few little light leaks. Now where I was having problems at is, let me see if I get you in camera, places like this where their detail work is so fine, there's like a hairline there between this section of, of detail and this section of detail, and primer, when I was using my primer about six to eight inches or 12 inches away from this just kind of misting it on because I didn't really want to load that primer on here and lose my detail so in some of these little places it the spray is just so small it doesn't get down in there I even had a problem back in here uh, where these two little parts came together okay so I had to go back over it again with some more of that little uh, 
formula stuff and touch up a couple other little places I saw and I believe now with another little mist coat of primer on it I think I'm 99.9% .9 sure I got all the light leaks um, and you're probably wondering why am I getting so many light leaks because I put all that uh, black and white on the inside to stop all that well there's just some places that uh, even on the inside <clears throat> where some of that paint didn't set up real thick and you're just going to, you know, there's just so much fine detail on this that you had to go around with that uh, tulip on the inside and, and catch some spots. But I think I'm there. I think I got it all, all pretty much sealed up now. So, uh, it's looking pretty good. Oh, these two little corners here, up here where I did that extra detail work because I said that, uh, let me see if I got them right there. Where I did that extra detail work that I, I said Mobius left uh, a big blank spot there. Well, while things were drying yesterday, I was sitting around and I was looking at the directions. And it's always a good thing to read your directions after you build a model. <laughs> That's so anyway. I found out that there were supposed to be two little things that they're, they're like a some kind of tanks and they're on both sides and I had them cut off of the sprues and they were just laying in the bottom of the box and I forgot all about them so when I was going through the directions I thought oh man no, there, there you go that's what fills in that area so I had to go back in and, and chip out with what I had put in there and then glue these things in so that filled up them areas my uh, my bad for getting on Mobius. So uh, that's where we're at right there so far. Now let me show you what else I got going on. Okay, here we are. We're back. I uh, I've been working on my base, and uh, what this is is I went over to the hobby and craft store, and I bought me a little box. Okay, and that was the top of the box went like that and all I did was take off the hardware the hinges and the little lock that was up here filled in the holes and I got me a nice little base now I had some scrap plywood out in the garage and I went and got me a piece of three quarter inch plywood and put in the inside here on the bottom because this this wood is pretty thin I don't even think it's a quarter inch right up here so I wanted to beef this up so I epoxied this piece of wood in there and then I come along and trench this out so my wires can run over here. I, I'm, I'm going to put a switch back here for the uh, for the electric coming in. Little doodad there. And then I'll put an off on switch up in front. But I've uh, been working on this. Here's my rod. It'll come up like that. When I get ready I'll epoxy this on and then the other rod will fit down inside of this with my wires and then I took and for about a whole day that little plaque that they gave you I've been work I was working on that that took me about a day to do this okay I took and uh, I I sprayed it with a uh, gloss black first and then I took gold paint and did the lettering and them little triangles or whatever they are in there to detail of that. And then I took some red and did the inner circle and the outer circle in red. That there took me about a day. I had to go out and get the finest little brush I could find and just sit there with my magnifiers and just going over it and then I you know once it's set I had to go over it again because that gold doesn't sit real good it takes a couple coats of that gold and that will go on there like that and voila you got a base now 
I also, you know, I got the bottom of the box, which could be another base for something else later on. It is a little thicker, but it'll work. I also bought one of these here. There's another one. I don't know if I mentioned it. These are only five bucks from the Hobby and Craft Store. So for five bucks, you got a base there. This one's a little rounded on the edges. Okay? So, you know, you can't beat it for five bucks. And what's nice about these is I will have room down here. If I decide to go with a 9 volt battery, I can put a 9 volt battery in here. And if this was uh, something where I had a control panel, a little um, circuit board or something, I would put that circuit board down in here. Uh, I've learned that from Simon Merckx of the uh, Kit Factory. If you ever watch his stuff, never ever put your circuit board in the model because if you start having problems with your lighting usually it's got, probably going to be the circuit board is the first place you're going to look and if you got that sealed up in your model you ain't going to get to it so his suggestion which is I think really good is <clears throat> any kind of circuit board you got goes down under the model down in the base so you can get to it so that's where we're on that. Now, still haven't picked out my color yet. But I went over to the hobby store and I was <coughs> pretty much leaning towards a gray. Uh, not the gray that, you know, that the model is now with the primer on it, but sort of a, a metal gray. And I know there's a bunch of them out there. Well, the first one here was a Tamaya. I picked up this Tamaya. And it's got too much metallic in it for me. I don't think that's going to work. And that's almost the same shade of the primer. So I don't think that's going to work. These other two are Model Masters. And that's a camouflage gray. And I know it looks like an off-white. So there you go. There's your off-white. That's called camouflage gray. And then I had this other one. Let me see what it was called. Silver Blue. And I sort of like that. It's, it's a gray with a little bluish tint to it. Does have some metallic in it. But I don't think, if you're just going to miss this on that model, I don't think that's going to hurt too bad. Kind of leaning towards this. And I know everybody's saying, whoa, 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 that's supposed to be a white ship. You know, I, I just don't like it white. I, I don't know. Still might go with it, with this uh, camouflage gray, or maybe look for a flat white. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I'm, you know, I sh this far along, I should have had my color picked out, but I'm not there yet. But I am kind of looking at towards going with this. I do like that. And it's not going to be covering the whole model. It's going to be misted on there. I'm going to have to hold that spray can away pretty far and just get it to mist on there so that my, my detail from the dark primer still shows out, stands out, if you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so that gets us caught up to now. I think that's it. Got to take that model in the bathroom, turn out all the lights, and make sure I got it completely sealed up. I'm tired of messing with that. There's just so much fine detail in it that the spray doesn't want to get down in there. And even when you light block it from underneath, you still have places, even putting Tamaya on some of them, or not Tamaya, but the uh, tulip. Even putting that tulip on some of them places, them lights are so bright that they will find a way to, to to come out through the top of the model. So I've been working on that for a couple days trying to seal up. I believe I got them 99.9% .9 done. So I'm going to go check that out and see where I'm at.